This is Carl Eller, and you're watching the One Bar and Lepicus Show. All right, welcome back to the One Bar and Lepicus Show. I am One Bar with Lepicus, and it is mailbag time. A lot of stuff going on in Vikings world, and, uh, you know, we've got a wide variety of questions coming in. A lot of stuff going on. Not a whole hell of a lot of it's real positive. Well, positive that it's not great. That's the way you look at it, really, though. It does. It does. You need to uh, you need to turn that frown upside down. Uh, before we get into that, remember, subscribe to the channel, like the videos here every damn day, talking Vikings win or lose. And also hit up that Patreon link down in the description, two bucks a month. We've got a couple more. I think we only got six more until we get to 50 patrons, which is our goal. Speaking of mailbag, pretty soon that ma mailman's mailbag will be full of those Patreon only exclusive Christmas cards on the Walmart and Lepica show. Uh, again, sign up now if you want your chance to get your hands on one of those buttes. All right, mail big time. Let's just start off with a couple of the. Uh, there was a common theme to these ones, and one and and Dane Winge or Wing got right to the point. Why isn't anybody fired? Well, and I think mostly, and we already touched on this. It's a short week. It's you got three games to prepare for your opponent coming up. Making a coaching staff change right now would would really really hinder your chances of winning. In a in you know as bad as the Vikings have been losing two in a row, uh, they're still in the playoff hunt. So you don't want to make that change right now, especially when you got all this money invested in this team. I'm sorry, did office. you say we're still in the playoff hunt? Technically, they still are in the playoff. Everybody hunt. just you... xed off. Everybody's. I'm gone just now. saying, they're, they're, that's just how they're going to look at it. They got all this money invested in this team. They're not just going to make a coaching change right now. So I would. I'm going to say. Friday, Saturday is where we can see a coaching change if the Vikings lose to the Steelers. Really? Wait till Saturday? Suspense. Suspenseful. Uh, all right. Let's go with another one. Um, SSM Creations is, is trying to put a positive spin on this as well. He says, is it possible that losing to the Lions motivates the Vikings rather than hindering them? You can go ahead and start on this one. Uh, while I enjoy the positivity... I love it. I think it's actually the other way around. I think this is just a dagger. We could just come out flatter than ever um, after this, especially on a short week. Who knows? I could be dead wrong, but I, I don't see how this motivates anybody. I, if I'm, I'm crying very sad tears every night if I'm a Viking player right now. I don't think it matters because I don't think this defense can stop anybody when it counts, whether they're motivated or not. So, yeah, they could all be pissed off, wanting to get this bad taste of their mouths, but this this defense especially is the point where I don't think they can do anything about it, um, whether they're motivated or not. So I don't think it matters. Um, all right, let's see. Ellis Gregor, our man, says with Big Ben announcing he won't be playing next year, what teams do you think will be looking for a new starting quarterback next year? What percent do you think Kirk will be the Vikings starting quarterback in 2022? It's your turn. Or is it my turn? It's my turn. Uh, percent. You know – it all depends. If, if there's a coaching change, if there's a front office change, if there's a new GM, will he feel like he needs to stick with Kirk Cousins? Will he look at this roster and think there's enough talent on it to compete with a new coach in charge or not? I'm going to go 40% chance he goes, 60% chance he's still here. Uh, I don't know what it's going to take to unload this contract to another team, what kind of draft capital it's going to look like, if whatever the Vikings get in return is going to be in, uh, w worth it in their minds to uh, for the team that's going to have to absorb that contract. So, uh, and the Vikings may still have to pay for part of it. I don't know how this, how this is going to shake out, but um, I'm going to say 40% chance he goes somewhere else. Yeah, I say uh, I'm going to say like a 3% chance he goes anywhere else. That contract is ginormous next year. The only way they get rid of him is if they trade him. And that is who cares about what we get in return. You got to find somebody that's going to take on that contract. But who knows? Maybe a team like the Browns, Stefanski, maybe, maybe they're a quarterback away and a, very familiar with them. Definitely. Uh, Definitely not 0%, but I well, think it's pretty damn low. It's got to be a contender, a team that thinks they're, you know, like you said, a quarterback away. Um, who knows? Maybe the Steelers, little Ben Roethlisberger is the possibility next year. If they think they can contend. Uh, I've seen them link to the Saints as well. So uh, definitely could be some teams that are interested and could be calling about Kirk Cousins and what it would take to get them, uh, get him on their roster. And the first part of it where, where he's asking what teams do you think will be in the hunt for a quarterback next year? I think there's going to be a ton looking for quarterbacks next year. Giants, Lions, possibly the Browns. These are just off the top of my head. You got the Texans, maybe the Dolphins. I mean, there's a ton of teams. So that could also help the Vikings case uh, for a team quarterback hungry for Mr. Cousins. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and this one is pretty much the same amount of me. Do you think the Vikings stick with Kirk Cousins next year? We'll cancel that part out. 
but he brings up another part. Or do you think Mond is basically even a even an option at this point for next year? Uh, no, this one is your turn. It is my turn. Uh, but the only way I could see Mond being an option is if they did unload Cousins and they and a new coach comes in. It's not a great quarterback class coming up in this draft. Uh, and they're just like, screw it. Let's see what he's got. This year's a wash anyways. Maybe he pops. All of a sudden, he's just having a fantastic year. Or they realize, all right, this guy might be a career backup. But, hey, we got our backup for the future. So that, that that's the only way I see they roll with Mond. Yeah, I agree. I mean, there's whoever comes in isn't going to be the guy who drafted him. There's not going to be any, like, heartfelt ties. Unless for some reason the guy the Vikings bring in loved Kellen Mond as a prospect and want to see what they got. Um, but yeah, if there's no other option and he's the best that emerges through camp, like if they go with the journeyman veteran to replace Kirk Cousins, say they get rid of him and it's him and Mond and Mond beats him out, then yes, we could see Kellen Mond next year. But I, I'm with you. I still expect us to see Kirk Cousins under center next year. Yeah, if it was Mond, they would bring somebody in. Like they would bring back uh, Case Keenum or just somebody that's just like, ah, this is gross. <laughs> like, yeah. like Gus Farratt, uh, I Satan hope it's not Rosenfels. I mean, that, Brooks that Bollinger. Of- Brooks Bollinger. Uh, we had them all. We had them all. Uh, we want them again. Don't we don't want them again? Uh, if Zimmer is gone, do we lose Justin Jefferson over how these last two years have gone? Or even with Zim being gone, would we lose Jefferson? I don't think so. I think you can throw a bunch of money at him, uh, especially if you, if you unload Kirk Cousins' contract and you put it all toward Justin Jefferson. You know, as ACDC once said, money talks. And uh, the Vikings throw enough at Ju- Justin Jefferson, he'll definitely stick around. Well, not only that, but the next coach that they bring in, hopefully they, that he has a maybe a tiny bit of say and just basically hopefully it's a, a coach that is just full-on offense, gets Justin Jefferson excited. And uh, that, I think that will even have a little bit more oomph than the money part. Yeah, the kid seems like he wants to win. And if he's in an offense he feels he can win in, that you know, is featuring him. And any coach coming in is going to recognize Justin Jefferson as one of the pieces on his team you want to build around for the future. And you'd be a moron not to realize that. So they're going to want him to stay. And hopefully it is an offensive guy who comes in. And uh, Jefferson definitely likes that idea. Jim Lund, or Lund, do the Vikings part ways with Daniil Hunter next year? <laughs> well, I think, is it you? Your turn? Uh, I think it's definitely a possibility, um, especially we keep going back to it, but if there's a new coach, we could have a ton of players that aren't back next year, even players as good as Daniel Hunter, but they reworked his contract specifically to allow them to walk away from him fairly easy. Um, so another injury, while it's not the neck, he came back, he was better than ever. Um, I, I think he absolutely could, could be gone next year. Yeah, it's definitely a possibility. I, so is he under contract next year or is he a free agent? Um, they can cut him. They, they, they uploaded his whole contract and they gave him a bunch of signing bonus this year. But I mean, could they still trade him? Yeah. Okay, well, I, mean, I didn't know. I didn't know if it was the, I, I didn't really read the details or remember what it was. It was a while ago when they did that. If it was going to be like a situation where he's a free agent or contest the waters with no compensation. But if you can get something for him, um, yeah, you look at the last two years, injury riddled, you know, he's only played half a season in two years. Still a very, very good player. Again, one of the pieces, if I'm a coach coming in, he's definitely somebody I want to keep on this roster. But you got to put money somewhere. And if you decide Justin Jefferson, you know, is a better piece to build around, then maybe that's where you throw your money and you let Hunter walk as much as it pains me to say that. Yeah, he signed through like 2023, something like that. So he's, he's around for a while. Um all right, next up, final. All right, we got two more. Raymond Hoagland. We get this question every time. Why isn't White Davis playing? Nobody knows. That's the answer. We're moving on. Uh, yep. Matamita, I double dipped here and put two questions. It's fine. Your, your wishes for Vikings' new head coach next year? Yeah, I mean, you did the video. I, I you know, I haven't got around to watching it. I've been very busy. Um, personally, a couple of guys. I mean, did. I want, I want an offensive-minded head coach. Uh, whether that's Brian Dayball, whether that's uh, Byron Leftwich, Kellen Moore is a guy I kind of like from Dallas. Just, um, you know, I think he's a bright offensive mind. And uh, that's who I want coming in here. A guy who, who's, you know, he's been around for a while. Uh, seen, you know, he, he made Dak Prescott look damn good at times. So Kellen Moore is kind of my favorite now, but I'd be happy with any guy who's got an offensive pedigree. Yeah, we're on the same page there. And I think that's the only way they go. Dayball, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a big Doug Peterson guy. Todd Downing, I think, is a is a very under the radar guy. I'm not on the Kellen Moore train. 33 years old. He's barely coached. 
I don't know. I think if you bring him in, you're going to have to sign these old farts around him to, to keep him in check. I mean, I would it'd be exciting if we got him, but um, I just would rather him go somewhere else. I'd be fine with him. You look at some of the young guys have been having success right out of the, out of the gates. So uh, I definitely wouldn't be opposed to him one bit. But then I think you make up another point, uh, the supporting cast. I don't want to see this retread of, you know, he's the brother of this guy. He's the father of the son of this. So this is why we're hiring him. No, no more nepotism. It's time to get just uh, find a great defensive coordinator, bring him in because what he's done in the past or what he, you know, brings to the table, not because he's somebody's relative. Enough of that shit. It's not working for us. I want a staff made up of er- no one, no blood relatives on this coaching staff next year. Something tells me that that, that is not going to happen. I think you are right. I don't think they're going to go down that road one damn bit. And if they got it, they're gutting it. Even, I, I mean, I could see even the favorites, Patterson, guys like that. I think they just, Wipe it clean, and it's like it's your just, ass this morning. It's just time. It's time for change. It's time for change from every single position on the coaching staff. And if Zimmer goes, like you said, the whole thing needs to go. Speaking of position, that is our mailbag for this week. I don't know if that had anything to do with position. Didn't my mind. All right, that is the mailbag. It's empty. It's on the table again. Pretty soon the postman will be coming. The mail mailbag full of one bar and Lepagus Christmas cards. So hopefully cool. you sign up for the Patreon so you get Segway. yourself one of those to hang on your mantle and sing Christmas carols under this Christmas. Uh, until then, guys, remember this. 60%, 60% of women fake orgasms just to keep their significant other happy and faithful. <laughs>